Hi guys, today we're gonna be showing you how to install Windows 11 from a USB flash drive. It can be used for any compatible desktops or laptops, so without further ado, let's get started. Step number one, compatibility checkup. In this step, we're gonna show you how to check your computer hardware for Windows 11 compatibility. If you're confident about your device being compatible with Windows 11, you can skip this step. There'll be timestamps all across the video. Well, to test your computer hardware for Windows 11 compatibility, we need a tool called PC Health Check app from Microsoft. So go to this website and get it downloaded. Link will be in the video description. Once downloaded, run it and click on the Check Now button. Now we'll scan your computer hardware for Windows 7 compatibility. And once it's finished, it will tell you whether your computer is capable or not of running Windows 7, at least officially speaking. If your computer doesn't pass the test, don't worry, at least you will know what went wrong and you can make necessary upgrades to your PC accordingly. And if you're curious, these are the following must meet requirements for Windows 7. Have a look if you want. So that's all here, wish you guys have a compatible device, so let's jump to the next one. Step number 2. Create a bootable USB flash drive. In this step, we're gonna show you how to download Windows 11 and create a bootable USB flash drive for the installation. For this, you need just two things. A flash drive with at least a capacity of up to 8GB of storage, a computer to make it into a bootable USB DVD. Hope you have all the aforementioned requirements in your possession. So here we go, get your computer and go to this website. A direct link will be in the video description. Don't worry, it's an official website of Microsoft where you can legally download your genuine copy of Windows 7, whether you have a license key or not. Once you're here, go ahead and click on the Download Now button under the Create Windows 11 Installation Media section, which will download a small program called Windows 11 Media Creation Tool. Go to the download location and run the program, it's a portable one, so you can run it without installation. Once you're here, you'll be greeted with a license agreement, accept it, and you will see the screen. At this point, you'll have to plug in your USB flash drive or pen drive that we mentioned earlier to the computer. But make sure you have a backup of anything important in it before proceeding any further because it will be formatted during the USB DVD creation process. Now let's get back to the media creation tool and uncheck this box. Use the recommended option for this PC. Unchecking the option will give us access to change these settings. So go ahead and choose your preferred language for Windows 7. And for the edition, there isn't anything other than just Windows 7 because it will become Home, Pro or Enterprise as you're validating the specific product or license keys later. And you'll not find an option here to choose a system architecture unlike its predecessors because Windows 11 is available only as a 64-bit OS for 64-bit CPUs. Once you're ready, click on the next button. Now you must choose the USB flash drive option from here. Now click next again and carefully choose your USB flash drive. Now click next once again which will start the Windows 11 download. Wait for it to finish and once it's done, it automatically starts the Windows 11 media creation process. It will take a few more minutes, so let's wait again. And there we go, the process has been completed and we have successfully created a bootable USB flash drive. So click finish which will close the media creation tool. Now eject the flash drive and we are moving on to the next step. Step number 3. Load Windows 11 setup using BIOS or UEF5. In this step, we're gonna show you how to enter into your BIOS or UEF5 firmware settings and run the Windows 11 installation media or the USB DVD that we just created. This is a step that most of you will struggle, but since we might have different BIOS interfaces, BIOS keys from different or same motherboard manufacturers. And I will try to explain most of the scenarios that you might encounter. So restart your PC or turn it on in case there is no OS pre-installed. Now hit your BIOS key continuously or press and hold it until you enter the BIOS settings. Please make sure to enter the BIOS key before the post or power on self test gets completed. To be more specific, start hitting the BIOS key as soon as you could after you have restarted or started the computer. For this particular Asus ZenBook laptop, the BIOS key would be F2 or function button 2. But in your case, it might be also your F10, F12, F1, F2 or delete keys. These are the most commonly known BIOS keys as far as I know. To find the particular BIOS key for your device, you can also refer to the device manual or just google it. Doing so will get you to your UEF5 firmware settings and for some reason if you're having issue entering the BIOS settings this way, don't worry you can also get to it by utilizing the advanced startup option in your Windows settings. Assuming you have an OS pre-installed in this case. Go to your Windows settings, update and security, recovery and click on the restart now button under the advanced startup section. Wait for a few seconds and it will bring you this menu. So go to troubleshoot, advanced options and choose UEF5 firmware settings and hit restart which will restart your computer and get you straight to your BIOS or UEF5 firmware settings. Anyway, once you get here, by utilizing no matter any of the aforementioned methods, look for an option called Boot Priority, or similar like it can be Boot Manager, Boot Menu and so on. 
you will know when you see it. Now you can either make the USB installation media that we created as the first boot device. In this case, it's my SanDisk flash drive and hit F10 to save and exit. Doing so will load the Windows 7 installation media. Or you can just go to boot menu and click on the installation media, which is also gonna start the setup. And that's all here, so let's move on. Step number four, Windows 7 installation. In this step, we're gonna walk you through the installation process for Windows 7. The step will cover every nook and cranny, which means it's also gonna cover the storage partition in depth. A step that some of us might find difficult. Warning before proceeding any further, please make sure to keep your laptop plugged in all time during the installation procedure and make sure to have a proper power backup in case if it's a desktop. For shutdown or any power failure while installing the OS will cause system malfunction. So let's get started. Choose your preferred language, time and currency format, keyboard or input method and click next. Now click on the install now button which will start the setup and will show you this Microsoft license agreement. Read through if you want, but you have to accept it to proceed further. So tick this box, I accept the terms and click continue, which will ask you to choose the type of installation. So go ahead and choose the custom option since it's a fresh install, which will bring you to this window where you can partition your storage. So let me show you how to properly partition your available storage into local disks. Size and number of local disks are doesn't matter. You can make as many as you want and as big or small as you want but I only recommend creating a minimum of two or a maximum of three local drives, including the system drive. The recommendation is also parallel to the capacity of your storage device. For example, if you only have a TB of drive capacity, I won't recommend splitting it into anything more than two. Anyway, at the end of the day, it's your decision, who am I to argue? So let's start. As you can see, this laptop already have a partition created from the previous installation. So let me show you how to delete them first. But beware deleting an existing partition will also delete any previously created data in them and it will get formatted afterward. So be sure to backup if anything important before proceeding. To delete an existing partition, just right click on the particular partition and click on the delete option down here. Now do this with all the partition including the system reserved one. Now you can see we have deleted all the partitions and we have close to a TB of unallocated space aka any physical space on a storage device that doesn't belong to a partition. Now I'm gonna show you how to create the local disks that we need from this available unallocated space. So go ahead and select the whole unallocated partition then choose new. Which will open this box where you can enter your desired drive size. I would like my first primary partition to be 300 GBs out of the available 953 GBs where I'm hoping to install Windows 11. So let's type in 317,000 MP, which is roughly about 300 GBs. If you're confused about converting GB to MB, just Google GB to MB converter, do the thing and you can enter that here. Click apply, then OK, and there we go. We have created the first partition, as well as you might notice, we have created two more partitions automatically in the process. The partition one and partition two. They are system reserved and MSR reserved or Microsoft reserved partitions. They are essential partition to your operating system in order to work. They'll be hidden for example, they can't be seen from your file explorer or this PC. So leave them as it is, do not delete or format them. Now as you can see, we have the leftover unallocated space of 644 GBs out of the 953 GBs. So let's go ahead and make a second partition of it. Same as we did before, select the unallocated space, click new and this time I'm gonna leave the size as it is. Because I want my second partition to be made of the whole leftover unallocated space. So click apply and that's it. Now we have created all the partitions that we needed. So let's go ahead and choose a partition to install Windows 11. I'm going to choose the 300 GB one. Now click next and you can see we'll start the installation process. Now all you have to do is sit back and relax. We will go through several phases of installation including several restart cycles during the installation process. So do not interrupt the process whatsoever and let's wait until it's finished. There we go, the installation process has just got finished but we have some more works to do before getting your hands on Windows 11. Step number five, Windows 11 initial setup. In this step, we're gonna walk you through the Windows 11 initial setup procedure. So follow me and let's get it done. From here, choose your country or region, hit yes, and you'll be asked to choose a keyboard input method. Choose as you prefer and hit yes. Now we'll let you choose a second keyboard layout. If you want, click add layout and choose another one or just hit the skip button. Now we'll ask you to set up your internet connection. If you have a wired connection, just plug it in or choose your preferred network from here. Click connect, which will ask you for your Wi-Fi password. Enter that here, click next, which will establish the Wi-Fi connection. Now click next again, which will run a quick Windows 11 update checkup. 
and once it finished, it will ask you to name your device. So enter your device name as you please and click next, which will restart your computer for one last time. Now we'll ask you to add your Microsoft account. So enter your Microsoft account credentials and sign in. After that, you'll be asked to set up Windows Hello. It's a facial recognition feature for Microsoft. Do that if you want or just skip. And it will ask you to create a pin for quick login. Click on create a pin button and enter a four digit pin here. Re-enter it to confirm. And once you do, click OK. Now we'll ask you if you want to synchronize your Microsoft apps and settings from another device under the same account. If you want, choose restore or choose setup as a new device for a fresh start. Click next and you'll be asked to choose the privacy settings for the device. Or can put it this way, what kind of data access are you comfortable giving Microsoft from your device? Things like location, diagnostic data and so on. Read through and enable or disable as you please. Hit next, next and I accept. Now we'll let you customize your Windows 11 experience. So I suggest you to go through these options and check your primary use for your particular device. Once you're ready, click next again and it will ask you to set up OneDrive for backup. If you're a OneDrive user, click next or just click on the only save files to this PC option. And finally, it will ask you to set up Microsoft 365. If you have a subscription for that, click next or click no thanks. Now let's wait for a few more minutes for it to prepare the desktop. And there we go. We have completed the Windows 11 installation successfully. Now go ahead and get all the proper drivers, get a license key if you haven't already, and enjoy your Windows 11. That's all for today. Leave a like if you like, subscribe to the channel, and enable the bell icon to watch more. If you found the video helpful, why not share with your friends as well? This is me, your host, Amr Rafiq. Thank you so much for watching.